Even our closing stand-up, I think I'm going to hit you right in the face because I really want your respect. <laughs> Moving along now to our third fight of the evening. Ten rounds in the Bantamweight division between two guys who have yet to taste defeat, Antonio Nieves and Nikolai Potapov. Well, like most of the fighters we see from Eastern Europe these days, Nikolai Potapov had a long amateur career, more than 170 fights. We saw Potapov last April in the second of the two fights he's had here in the U.S. when he escaped with a draw in a back-and-forth fight with unbeaten American Stefan Young. Potapov was scheduled to face Antonio Nieves last August on Showbox, but he was injured and had to withdraw, so he went back home to Russia where he fought a couple of uh, fights just to get ready for this fight. He had had his first 13 professional fights in Russia. He's a technical fighter, a boxer who can, if necessary, be aggressive. He's ranked in the top 15 by three of the alphabets, so the stakes, needless to say, quite significant. Steve, let's go behind the numbers. Nikolai Potapov. Well, Barry, as you mentioned, in his one showbox appearance, Potapov fought to a draw with Stefan Young. Nieves also fought Young, and that result was also a draw. So please, somebody win this fight. Rushing home after seven straight fights that went 10 rounds or longer. Potapov returned home last year. He scored two KOs, but don't get excited. The opponents had records of 10, 38, and 3, and 2 and 15. And quality imports. Back when Potapov was regularly fighting in Russia, most of his opposition was imported. And the fighters were better than you might think. This Bantam has not been babied. 29-year-old Antonio Nieves comes to us from Cleveland. Tonight, he makes his second Showbox appearance. Last August, Nieves agreed to fight a last-minute substitute, Alejandro Santiago, after Potapov withdrew and seemed fortunate to wind up with a draw. Tonight, he says he won't be seeing the flat-footed fighter, that is, we won't be, at times struggled with Santiago. He feels that, he's over, that he overtrained for that fight. Nieves is a boxer counterpuncher. He's got good ring movement, comes off a second-round KO win this past November. He's also ranked in the top 15 by one of the sanctioning bodies, so the stakes are high for him as well. Steve, go behind the numbers with Antonio Nieves. Well, for Nieves, Barry, decent, but like the unbeaten Potapov, the unbeaten Nieves has faced good but not A-level opposition. That's why this fight is so important for him. He needs a signature win. Ohio low. Nieves was hoping a win tonight would lead to an all-Ohio title challenge of Cincinnati's Rashi Warren. But Warren just lost his title. Has that negatively affected Nieves' motivation? And time is now. This will be Nieves' fourth start in the past 10 months. During that time, he's developed into a 10-round fighter. He's 29, an advanced age for most Bantams, and there's pressure to deliver now. All right, once again, we take it to the center of the ring for the introduction of the fighters in our third fight of the evening. Here once again is our ring announcer, Pete Trevino. Pete. Ladies and gentlemen, the boxing continues here on Showbox, the new generation. From the event center here at MGM Grand Detroit, brought to you by Salida Promotions in association with MGM Grand Detroit and Showtime. All of this evening's matchups have been sanctioned under the auspices of the State of Michigan Unarmed Combat Commission. Your judges for the following contest are as follows. From Lincoln Park, Michigan, Frank Garza. From New York, New York, Waleska Ralden. And from Detroit, Michigan, Ansel Stewart. And the man in the middle of the fight responsible for keeping it clean and fair is referee Gerard White. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-main event of the evening for the NABO Championship, scheduled for 10 rounds in the Bantamweight division. Are you ready for it, Detroit? Say yeah! <laughs> Introducing your fighters first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks trimmed in blue and gold. Standing five feet, five inches tall, he weighed in at 117 and one half pounds. He comes to the ring undefeated with a record of six wins, no losses, and one draw, with eight of those big wins coming by way of knockouts. Fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, by way of Podolsk, Russia, ladies and gentlemen, here is Nikolai Potapov. His opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner wearing the silver trunks and black. Standing five feet, four inches tall, he weighed in at 116 and one half pounds. 
He also comes to the ring undefeated with a record of 17 wins, no losses, and two draws, with nine of those big wins coming by way of knockouts. Fighting out of Cleveland, Ohio, ladies and gentlemen, here is the reigning, defending, and ABO Bantamweight champion, Antonio Carita Nieves. Referee Gerard White with your championship instruction. Gentlemen, this is for the NABO Bantamweight title. You're going over the instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. This is good. This is good. Touch them up and we can go to work. A lot of intensity, especially from the Evers. As we look at the numbers for these guys, as was the case with our first Bantamweight bout tonight, both these fighters came in lighter than usual. The contracted weight was the Bantamweight limit of 118 pounds. They both came in well under. Rules here, the unified rules, no standing aid, no three knockdown rule, only rough to stop the fight, cannot be saved by the bill in any round. If there's an accidental foul, that brings a stop it before the end of round four. No decision after that, we go to the cards. Barry. Thank you. This will be a 10 round fight, and a fight that does have some title opportunities, perhaps, to the winner. Now, Potapop wearing the familiar Kronk trunks. Yeah, that's trying to work the jab early in this fight. See the amateur experience, part of pop, mostly domestic amateur fights, not a big amateur star. And Nieves did fight in the 2012 Olympic trial. And he was a top American amateur, the pro experience. More rounds for Potapov, despite the fewer fouls, because he's been in so many 10 and 12 round fights already. Yev is really working that jab, being very effective with that jab. These guys have similar styles. I'd say they're both primarily boxers. But I feel that it's going to be important for Potapov to be the one to put a little bit of pressure on the others. Yes, I agree. I think Potapov is going to have to close that range, get closer, close the distance. As you pointed out, though, Raul, he's working the jab. The Evans is working the jab pretty well here. And he, that, yeah, that's exactly what he said he was going to do. And that fight with Agustin Santiago, he said that wasn't him. He was too flat-footed. He wasn't using his speed, his jab, his angles. He said that, was, you know, he, we're going to see a more better Nieves, you know, the whole arsenal, the, the technician that he is. And uh, so far in this round, he looks like he's in a zone. He's in control. That jab, very effective. The same, same thing, the jab, up and, up and down. I think he's winning this round. I do too. Came to the counter left hand, took a left hand from Potapov. I like seeing the Evis not only jab, but every once in a while come back with the right hand behind the jab. Yeah. The jab of Nevis, the difference in this first round. Yeah, I think Potapov studying the Evis hasn't figured out yet how to reach him. That hook of, seems to be the way to go. A lot of those punches that are caught in the gloves of Nieves. Good angle there. Spin him around and body shot by Nieves. I know it's only one round, but Nieves definitely looks quicker than he did when he fought on showbox against Santiago. No question. We had a chance to talk to Antonio Nieves about what he needed to do in this fight and make things a little better for him. Since he likes to come forward, he likes to be in that mid-range, by me using my double jab and my jab, it's gonna keep him off balance. And by me um, changing angles, is he doesn't move his feet very fast. So by me moving those ankles, it's gonna give me the opportunity to hit him with big shots from the side. Instinct, something he's been doing for hours. So let's bring the right hand nice and straight behind it, and then the hook behind that. Now, 
when he does touch you a couple times, you got to return this stuff. You got to go to those Framptons. You got to go to those counter shots. Okay, you're doing a nice job. Okay, let's be let's be just a little bit more finesseful too. Let's keep working our angles. All right. So here we go, round two. We were told yesterday that uh, the Edison's trainer, Joe Delgai, who's one of the top trainers in the Cleveland area, would not be here tonight. But uh, that was him in the corner, so he made it. Yeah, he did. Which is good for the Evers, a familiar voice, his face in the corner. Yevis right now executing exactly the game plan that he just spoke of. It's a good sharp jab. Very solid jab. I like the way he changes the speed and he doubles it, triples it. And he doesn't fall in. He knows how to control that balance. Unlike Tucker, you know, he doesn't fall in. That's what I'm trying to say about uh -huh. Nieves. Tucker was falling in. Notice the difference with Nieves. He doesn't fall in. He might miss the jab two or three times, but he still stays in balance, stays in form, keeps his composure. But Pop really not able to get off quite yet. And Raul's point is such a good one because really what separates average fighters from really good fighters, balance might be the most important single thing. And it's something we don't talk about a lot, we take for granted a lot, but a real pro always keeps his balance. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Steve. The, the balance, to be the balance and a good jab, a good steady jab, always got to pop that jab because everything comes off the jab. So you got to have a decent jab or even keep the jab out there if you're not doing anything. It'll always keep your opponent thinking, what is he going to do next? Where is he going? Which way is he moving? Photo pop with the right hand of the body, one of the few shots he's gotten that way in this fight so far. You know, he's not always effective shot. doing it, but stop, Nieves stop. clearly has the quicker feet. It's just he's got to put his punches together with the movement he's showing. But he's going to clearly win these rounds because these are not power punches. So the difference in rounds is going to be pretty subtle for the judges to figure out. Yeah. All about volume. But again, I think an effective round. Yeah, the, not, but you see nice counter left hook. Watch your feet. He's doing his thing in there. He's, he's relaxed. He's, he's having fun. You can tell in the fighter when he, he's relaxed. You, you saw him use his counter left hook right now off the jab. That's a very effective punch. If anybody's tight and tense, you could see it in put off space. Oh, nice. He's tight. Not loose. Stop. More jab hooks. More jab. More jab. Yeah? More jabs. Bucket. 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 More punches. More punches. You pull the hook. Pull right back, right back, right back inside. Cena, Cena, Bistro. Okay? Cena, Bistro. More punches. Let's go. A little, bit of, a little bit of Russian put about language there. Next time we see him, he may turn his name into a Russian name. Yeah, he never does. <laughs> well, this is their first fight together, and that's always asking a lot for a trainer to implement what he wants the fighter to learn after only one camp. That was a nice 
left hand dug in by Futterpoff. Well, again, he's on the end of Nieves' jab. Now you see, you see Nieves baiting that jab. He's throwing up in the air, then he jabs to the to the body. Off his head, off his head. Let's see if he does it again. Both landed left hook. Yes. There's a right oh. hand from Potipov. Getting a little more in range here. Two body shots in the left hand upstairs by Nieves. See, Nieves knows the movement is all fine and good, but he's got to land punches. And it's when he's standing flat-footed and throwing these shots like right now, that's when he's getting hit. And he's got to keep his right hand up because you saw Potipov left hook landed a couple of times. And Sugar Hill said they've been working on his left hook, and he really sat on it. I think he... He felt that left hook. Nice quick combination there, too. Left hand and right hand behind it by Potipov. Much better round for Potipov here. And he's done it, Barry, mostly with the left hook. We mentioned that Stefan Young forced both of these guys to draw, so of course I have to ask Stefan Young who he picks in this fight. He gave a slight edge to Nieves, but he said only if Nieves is busy. He has to throw a lot of punches. That was Stefan Young who fought both of these guys to a draw. And he has done that so far. He stayed pretty busy. Potipov is more busy here in this one. from round three. They're in tight, and that's a nice left uppercut from Potipov. Really effective shot. I think Barry Rowell and I all gave uh, Potipov that round. Did. I did. So did I. So round four. Scheduled for 10. Left hand from Potipov again, finding more of a home for that. Yep, uh, he's changing it off the jab. Same thing Nevis was doing with his jab hand. And you saw Sugar Hill showing Potipov he wants him to throw that left hook, or at least to finish with that left hook. Power shots, Nevis slightly more accurate. Probably two rounds to one, the Evis, but uh, you could argue it could be two to one, Potipov. Could be, yeah. yeah. See, at times, the Evis comes forward as he's been doing some of this round. And that's where Potipov gets off with his shots. So that's why Nevis got to be able to control it. I think he's better off at long to mid range and keep turning. Don't stand too long in front of him. Do his work and then get out. Spin well, him around, give him angles. Yeah, and I was going to say, one of the things he told us in our in our fighter manage was he's got to give him angles. And last couple of rounds, he seems to be a little bit more squared up in front of him. More flat-footed almost. Which is what That's he said he did in the last fight. Exactly. He did, does not want to do that. He's got to get back on his toes and just use flat, fast, quick combinations and, and just keep turning him, giving him angles. And, See, like right there, he's following him in. He's going in too straight. He's not going in at an angle. Remember he said he was going to go in at an angle? Well, he's not doing that. He's just coming straight forward. And I think part of the reason for that is there's been an adjustment from Potipov, which is that Potipov's drawing Nieves in. I agree with you. He's not stop, applying stop. pressure. Stop. Not coming Get forward. Back. Remember, Potipov? 
Fox, the guy's been in a bunch of 10 and 12 round fights. He's a very experienced guy. He's seen a lot of styles, and right now I think he's trying to draw Nieves in. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right, he is. And Nieves is falling for it. Yeah. He'll wait, he'll hit him with three shots and he'll sit there in the pocket like he's gonna fight in there. Then he'll back up, and Nieves feels like he's gotta come after him. That's how Nevis walked right to him. The back, keep your head off. This could be a swing round because there have not been a lot of clean punches landed in this no. round. It's been a tough round for the judges. Stop! Step back. Final seconds of this round. Very close round. Well, coming up next, the network debut of Clarissa Shield. And uh, everybody very excited about that. And of course, before the hometown fans here, not far from her home of Flint, which is about 70 miles away, as Steve pointed out earlier, about an hour's drive away. She'll have a big contingent here at the MGM tonight. She fights a much more experienced opponent in Sylvia Zabadosh, who has uh, had 20-something fights, very confident, she has only been stopped once, and uh, Clarissa right. told you, Steve, that uh, hit her in the face in the first round. Good strategy. I think so. Five, answer five. That's still to come, our main event of the night. Hope they don't leave their uh, fight in the dressing room. My God. Seconds down. They're working up a sweat. Five, five, five. <laughs> round five. Close fight here. Well, Nieves has thrown more punches. Whether that alone will convince the judges to score for him remains to be seen. Because in terms of clean punches landed, it's really close. In that last round, you can make a case either way, I think. There's that finish, that clean up left hook by Potapov again. And that's where he wants to be. And body punches, Nieves with a big Stop. edge. Step back. Give me a break, fellas. Give me a break. Thank you. Maybe that'll be the difference. We still have more than half the fight to go. Very tactical fight so far. Yes, we're back and forth, and it's really a hard fight to judge so far. Nobody really taking over. Break. Stop. But watch your hands. Uh, and Nieves has had two draws, and you can really see why. <laughs> And with both of these guys, you know, they're, they're not big punchers. Yes. Their, their KO percentage, both guys, is right around 50%. But they've remained undefeated. And both guys do have chances because of the alphabet ratings to fight for a world title in right. the near future. Right. Only the winner is going to have that opportunity after this fight. Nieves got the better of the inside fighting, and there was a left hand slip in by Nieves. Yeah, Nieves, he has to keep him, every time he gets in the inside, he's got to take advantage and keep investing on the body shots. Because if anybody starts throwing the body shots, is Nieves. Hopefully in the later rounds, it'll pay off, and it'll tire for pop. As we said, these two were supposed to hook up last year in Rochester, New York. Potapov was injured, could not fight. Santiago stepped into the fray and wound up in a draw with Nieves. Just not a lot of clean power shots landing by either guy. Left hand actually was a little short. You think Nieves has abandoned the jab a little bit? He's, he's getting a little right hand happy, isn't he? Aren't yeah, I mean, early he was jabbing quite a lot. Seems like he's looking for one punch. Time! Another close round. Yeah. yeah. Was. 
halftime. Jabs, basically the same, although Nieves obviously has been much busier with his jab, but not landing any more than Potapov. Power shots, very close. Total punch is very close. The only real difference is the body punching that Nieves has done. Extremely close fight. It was the, uh, Nieves, and I'll tell you, I mean, this fight is very even on my scorecards, and somebody's got to take over in the second half of the fight for Nieves. He's got to get back at long to mid range and you know use that jab again give him angles don't stand so in front of Potapov and bait him to his fight for Potapov same thing he's a smart guy in and out try to bait him in stay more in the pocket throw more combinations throw more punches and try to land that big left hook so we come to round six second half of this fight now very close fight. And with so many of the power shots are not landing flush, it really forces the judges to really focus. So many of these shots are either missing or, or are partially deflected or caught on the shoulders or the forearms. It's, it's, it's really hard for the judges to find a reason to give somebody around and, and then it it really doesn't help when nobody gets hurt i mean they right they get hit with some good shots but you don't see nobody rattle nobody seem like they got hurt back up nothing like that so and these two fighters do something perhaps because they're more mature than some of the prospects we see on showbox they do something that's very very elemental but very very important they're very good at keeping their hands high after they punch before they punch Opposite, opposite. And that's maybe one of the reasons, as Raul said, neither fighter has been hurt in this fight. Blood on the cheek yeah. of Yemis. It looks like a cut over the right Bo eye. I mean, they're both technical fighters, and they got great fundamentals. You, you could tell they got a good base, you know, I mean, form, the, the, the balance. Throw three and four pass combinations. One of them jabs a little bit better than the other one, like Nieves. Just seems like a very good match. I mean, that's yeah, very even. Yeah. Stop. Back. See how bad that cut is. It, it's in the corner of the eye. Yeah, I believe it's on the eyelid, which is usually a bad spot and a hard cut to stop bleeding. The fight this close, you have to think Potapov will try to work on that. There's a left hand right on it. Well, the first adjustment in this technical boxing match clearly was made by Potapov when he decided, I'm not going to chase Nieves. I'm going to have him come to me. Maybe it's Nieves' turn now to make a, an adjustment. Yeah, let's see. He's still trying to press the fight here. This with that uppercut. I'll tell you what, it's okay if Nieves baits into that, you know, come, coming straight forward. At, I mean, coming into Potapov, but... Again, he, he can't just come straight in. He's got to come in at an angle, at an angle. That way he keeps turning him. Neither of these fighters has ever been down. Oh. There was a good left hand from Potapov. Big mistake, the way he pulled out, hands down. Happens all the time. Okay. And I gave put up on that round because of that left hook did. As did I. The last punch was a little low. Be careful. Well, still the common course. Clarissa Shields in our main event of the evening. There's Tommy Hearns. He's still looking good, isn't he? The hitman. Yeah. One of the greats. An extremely popular figure here in and about Detroit. What he did for this city on August 2nd, 1980. When he won the welterweight title, was really amazing. Joe Louis Arena. Special guy. He can punch a little. A little bit. <laughs> he will forever be, along with Emmanuel Stewart, of course, the face of the legendary Kronk team. Absolutely.
This is round seven of this 10 round fight. A very close fight. Yemis was cut in the last round. The corner of the right eye. Right hand from Yemis. And a clash of heads there. The last round, I asked if Nieves was maybe getting away from the jab. Well, on cue, the show stat guys tell us that Nieves landed 19 jabs over the first three rounds, only six jabs in the wow. last three rounds. Big dip, big dip, yeah. yeah. One of the reasons he's not landing that jab is because Bob is staying on the outside, and not walking into that jab. Three or four punch combination, but not really anything solid. Stop! Stop! Get back. Box. You know, I don't even want to think this, but at the top I said anything but a draw. Well, <laughs> you know, we're right, right now on my card, I have it a draw. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I, saying anything else. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> 57, 57. I have fun <laughs> ahead. Just because I refuse to score. It's short I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You're not being a fair judge, man. I know. I so it'll so be a majority draw. <laughs> Which short with that right hand, Yemis. Talk about adjustments. Well, if Portapop's going to lay back, as he's been doing, one way to counter that, if you're in the Evers, is to, is to volume punch. And it's hard to do that against a good counter puncher, and Portapop does counter punch well. There's a little bit of volume work. Yeah, yeah shoe shine. Never staying busy in this round. I'm That's busier more. with the two. Nice shot there. Left hand, right hand behind it. Stop. Your back. Box. Both of these fighters understand at this point in the fight. The knockout is unlikely. Right. But a matter of fact, the knockdown is unlikely. So it's incumbent upon both of them to figure out ways to do enough to get that 10-9 round from the judges. The easiest and most common way to do that is just throw more punches in your opponent, even that, if you don't land them. Yeah, and, th and that's what Davis is doing yes. right now. Yeah, I think he is. He's doing a lot of it, more of it. More than Potapov. Now I'm digging through the body. He's changing it up. Throw some furries, then he sits down on the shots, throws two hard shots, and he gets back outside with the jab, and then throws some furries again. And that cut is not appreciably worse. That's not stopped bleeding, but it's not any worse than it was in the last round. Three fights ago, the Evans was cut over the right eye, so this is a recurring problem. Three rounds. Okay. Une, une. Okay. Good defense. Smart punches. More balance. More balance for hooks. Okay. Bow. All short. Short bistro. Let's go, baby. We almost home. Okay. Round number eight, a fight that is still there, I believe, for the taking. And you heard Trigger Hill talk about balance with Potapov. He said that's the first thing and the point of emphasis in camp was to work on Potapov's balance. He wanted the balance to improve so that Potapov could punch at any point. He seems to be balanced most of this fight. Yeah. Both of them do. Well, they both bounce a little bit on their toes yeah. when they're not punching. Watch your hands. Not a lot has changed in terms of tempo, in terms of strategy over the last few rounds. The one punch that I 
I think may give Nieves an edge, although I actually have Potapov ahead of point at this point, is that left hook to the body. Nieves has been the better body puncher through seven rounds. Yeah. It's a close fight. I, you can see this fight either way right now. Totally. I have Nieves in front by a point. Yeah, yeah so one, I. one round difference. Sugar Hill agreed with us. He told Potapov close fight. Yeah, he said win the last three rounds. This one, there's nothing to choose between the two of them. Opposite. Stop, stop. Thank you. Opposite. Keep your head up. Box. Well, it definitely seems that Potapov's approach has taken the jab out of play largely from the others. There he tried to set up the right hand with the jab, but for the most part, the jab has not been anywhere near as effective as it was early in the fight. And that figured to be the jab from the hand speed and the foot speed of Nieves figured to be his advantage. Not as much action here in this eighth round. There's a left hand from Potapov. I'd say this round is still there to be one. No. Yeah. That was a good jab. Yeah. The jab and them flurries could make the difference. I don't know with, with Nieves. But it is a very close round. Potapov giving Nieves a little bit of his own medicine, banging three shots to the body. Again, even if those punches don't land or if they're blocked, judges are looking for something for a reason to give one fighter the round. It's a really close round. Time out here to right the referee now as the fighters come to the center of the ring and here we go round nine Certainly been an easy fight for a referee Gerard White That was not the case in our previous fight for Frank Garza. No, I'll say well, Here you see two professionals who have really good balance Really know how to box what they're lacking is obviously punching power Tell you what, after eight rounds, I mean, you could see what kind of fighters they are because they threw a lot of punches, they're tired, but they're still keeping their composure, their yep. balance. Yep. And you see Good nine rounds jab. or more. Yeah, Barry, nine rounds or more, Potapov with a big edge in terms of experience. Bring that up, bring it up, okay? Box. But the numbers suggest it would be a long shot that we would have a knockout late in this fight. Nobody's been hurt in this fight. Hasn't been any real damage. There is a cut over the right eye, but I don't think there was any one punch that caused that. We were told that if Nieves wins, he'd be the second mandatory for the WBO title. Marlon Tapolos has that title. So the stakes here are pretty big, and the uh, judges may determine the, ultimately the fate of which one of these guys does get a title fight. Potapov wanted a headbutt there. Stop, but stop. Okay? Okay? Watch your head. Box. Off his head, off his head. This round is just like all of them. Oh, that was nice. a good right hand by Nieves, and Potapov answers with the left hand of his own. That that uppercut. Uppercut again. Yeah, it was the uppercut that, that Dave put up off and he threw it again. He had his and then put up off, digs a left hand in and comes upstairs with a left hand. So both guys opening up a little bit here in round nine. Safe to say that uppercut was the best punch of the fight. I think so. Yes. And the first time I see one of the fighters get hurt with the uppercut. Yeah. First time anybody's taken a backward step, really. Yeah, and, and given how this fight's being fought, you would think that 
one punch like that being as effective as it was is probably going to be enough to give him the round. Tried it again there. Yeah, he caught partially on the gloves that time. He was trying to measure it with that jab. He got that measuring stick. He's working it. Final seconds of round nine. That is Anthony Durrell, a former world Zip. champion, and he's going to get the opportunity to fight Callum Smith from England Thank you. for a super middleweight title that was vacated by Badu Jack. So that fight was won in first bits by a U.S. promoter. So likely Durrell will get to fight Callum Smith in the USA. Yeah. It's a big event. Yes, absolutely. Let me get this one. Now, I want your hands up the whole round. I want you boxing the whole round, okay? All angles, all intelligence, all boxing, okay? I want you to win the round now. I want you to be busy, you understand? Be strong, you train hard, you train hard. Good training. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, baby, let's get it. Let's get it. Tenth and final touch round, up, they'll touch gloves. The bat. Box. Well, for what it's worth, guys, Nieves has averaged 16 more punches thrown per round. Coming in from previous fights, we know that he averaged about 10 more punches per round. Maybe that punch difference will be the difference in the scoring. Well, I have and Raul, both of us have. Nieves ahead by three points here, so unless at least on our cards, unless Potapov could knock him out. I think Nieves had a big round of the last one. Yeah, with that. Really? Yeah. I have it a little closer. I have it 86-85, uh, so one round difference on my card to Nieves. Please don't be a draw. <laughs> They wanted Nieves just to box the entire round, but they wanted, they said, win the round. Well, you don't want to get lazy and think, hey, I got the, the fight won. Well, no. Just give it away, give that round away, yep. If Steve's card is, is right, and there's just as great a chance he is, is than ours is, he would need this round. Nieves strictly staying on the outside this round, but not that lively with his legs. Not as much action in this final round as I thought there might be. I thought there might be a little bit more desperation involved. Yeah, this was a fight of technical boxing. So different from the Bantamweight fight we saw of the more inexperienced fighters in yes. our first fight. Yes. That was a collision. Is Nieves doing enough this round? That's the question. Because that could be asked of both fighters in virtually every round. Potapov just trying to kind of counterweight for Nieves to come to him. And then throw combinations. That was a quick right hand from Nieves. Counter left hand from Potapov. Well, to the absolute shock of nobody, this is going to the cards. Yes. <laughs> we kind of felt that way coming in. It's been a technical match. Left hand dug in by the Evans after two misses from Protopoulos. And maybe that's been the difference in the Evans' body shot. Yeah, it could be. Once again, it is in the hands of the judges. Nevis and his corner think he won the fight. Or at least they want us to believe. Yeah, exactly. They think Maybe he won selling the fight. it. I don't know. 
It, it close five, but it's a two point fight. I gave the last round to Potapov. I got it exactly like you were, 96 94. Well, the jabs, I'm sure Nieves would have liked to have had a bigger edge there. He landed only 11%, a very low percentage of his jabs. The power shots, the real difference in the power shots were the body punches, and that's where Nieves had an edge, mostly left hooks. He, he threw uh, 141 more punches. That might be enough. All right, let's see what they have as we go to the center of the ring. Here again is Pete Trevino. Pete. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for both of the fighters in this ring. After 10 rounds of championship fighting, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Garza scores the contest 96-94 for Potapov. Judge Roland scores the contest 96-94 for Nieves. And Judge Stewart scores the contest 96 to 94 for your winner and new NABO champion, Nikolai Potapov. Well, the most surprised guy in the room, without question, was Antonio Nieves. <laughs> he definitely did think he won the fight. You know what? Split decision, six rounds to four. But Potapov twice, and the Evis once. I can't say it's a bad decision. I can't say it's a good decision. But it wasn't a draw, so I'm happy. No, I feel the same way. And there were there were enough rounds in there that were close rounds that could go either way. Uh, two judges saw those close rounds the way of Potapov, and uh, one saw it the way we saw it, and that was uh, for Antonio Nieves. But uh, I can't really whine about this decision. Potapov is the winner here again, Steve. A look at the uh, judges' scorecards. Well, what you're looking at right here is obviously a very close fight where one round difference would have been a draw on all three cards. And, you know, Potapov, he, he wants a shot at the fighter who beat Rashi Warren, the Russian new Bantamweight. He's moved closer to that. The Evis, it's a, clearly a setback. In terms of excitement, neither fighter did enough to make me want to see them in a world title fight. Yeah, no, I think that's right. I think that's right. But Potapov gets the W and uh, the undefeated mark of Antonio Nieves. Uh, goes by the wayside I have an idea we'll see both these guys once again and uh, we still have another fight to go